In this video today, we will discuss the biology of a queen xenomorph, her anatomy, reproduction, the two ways she can be created in a hive, and her evolutionary forms. So, standing at an imposing 4.5 meters, or 15 feet tall, the queen or the internecivus raptus regina is a giant specimen, dwarfing her smaller counterparts to the drones. While most drones are seen to be about 2 meters tall, the queen's bulk and height give her an intimidating presence. Some older queens have been known to grow even larger, with the ultimate being 15.2 meters or 50 feet tall. This enormous size along with being a queen cast allows her to exert dominance and control over their brood. The queen as with other xenomorphs are encased fully inside a chitinous exoskeleton, which is not just for show, it is a tough, armored exterior that provides excellent protection against conventional weaponry. The outer layer of the queen is even thicker than that of the drones, and it is quite resilient, being capable of repelling sustained automatic gunfire, although not invincible, since armor-piercing rounds can still pose a threat. But still, this hardened shell gives her more protection than those seen in the lesser cast. Now, the queen's head is a spectacle of alien evolution. The large crest extends from the back of her skull, serves multiple functions, including sensory perception. This crown-like structure acts as a sort of antenna, helping her detect various thermal, biochemical and bioelectric signals with impressive sensitivity. Her jaws are massive, being a magnified version of the drone's jaws. It is filled with razor-sharp, translucent teeth several centimeters long, and her inner jaw can even rival a human head in size, which is just terrifying. As for the senses, the queen's eyes, just like the drones, are not visible exteriorly, but are hidden within the head crest, like cameras in a one-way mirror. She might also utilize echolocation to detect movement, and also prey within the depths of the hive, a skill that allows her to remain aware of her surroundings. These and also a strong sense of pheromones and heat, which was revealed to be one of the senses the xenomorphs have in recent lore. So with that large head comes a larger intellect as well. When it comes to intelligence, the queen is a step above the average xenomorph. Her brain is significantly larger, giving her advanced problem-solving skills and surprising degree of self-preservation, thus making her truly sentient. The queen's communication skills are equally complex and sophisticated. While she can issue audible screeches to command her drones, it is believed her primary means of communication involves pheromones and possibly even ultrasound. There are theories from the expanded lore that speculate that there might be a sort of bioelectrical hive consciousness enabling her to connect with her brood over long distances. Her large head crest could also maybe serve as a transmitter giving her the ability to communicate and coordinate with her drones effectively over a wide radius. So taking a step back, when we look again at the queen's body, we can see that the design looks menacing and Lovecraftian. The queen's limbs particularly are built for strength and dexterity. She possesses double-jointed hind legs that enable her to maneuver surprisingly well for her size, allowing her to run at speeds of up to 40 km per hour when necessary faster than the average man, maybe as fast as Usain Bolt. Her front limbs are equipped with six digits, including notably long fingers in the middle that provides precision for handling her environment and her brood. Then there are the peculiar smaller arms which are situated from her chest, which might help her in more delicate handling of the overmalls. When coming to the tail, we can see that it is really impressive. It is long, segmented and ends in a blade-like tip, which is really good for defense and combat. There are also terrifying appendages on her back, which are noticeably a series of dorsal tubes and spikes. These dorsal tubes are not merely decorative, they play a role in her biology, perhaps aiding in the release of pheromones or acting as chimneys for heat dissipation, due to the hypermetabolism her species is famous for, thus creating a lot of heat to grow and develop. So, when we take a look at the hypermetabolism that the queen's biology is uh, famous for, this thing grants her a super fast growth rate and incomprehensible speed in development, which breaks the laws of known physics. 
For instance, her acidic blood, a hallmark of xenomorphs, acts as both blood and a defense mechanism. It is a molecular acid which is theorized to be either composed of sulfuric acid or hydrofluoric acid or even a mixture of both and some other weird ones. If threatened, this corrosive fluid can spill onto attackers, causing irreversible corrosion. The acidic blood also acts as a substance for circulation, surprisingly, much like how our red blood carries oxygen and food throughout the body, so thus this do the same for the xenomorph. And inside the cells of the queen and her species, if we take a look through the microscope, we would find the pathogen, the black goo, which is also known as chemical A03959X91-15, a non-Newtonian basic form of life which is an extremely potent and virulent mutagenic pathogen consisting of millions of small microorganisms theoretically manufactured by the alien species known as the engineers, and this is made to create and destroy life. But perhaps one of the most fascinating aspects of the queen's anatomy is her reproductive system. When it's time to lay eggs, she becomes immobile, anchored to solid and rigid surfaces by means of a set of appendages that emerge from the back, probably modified spines. The enormous ovipositor or egg sac is then formed which can extend up to 9 to 12 meters long, so 30 to 40 feet. This massive structure allows her to produce about 15 eggs per hour, and over the course of her egg laying period, the total number would be in the hundreds or maybe even thousands. During this laying stage, she relies entirely on her drones and workers, warriors, for protection and support. However, when the drones and the warriors fail at their tasks, she can break free from the appendages and from the egg sac, just as was seen in Aliens 1986 and in Aliens vs Predator, to attack in vengeance and or to defend the vulnerable hive. The strange biology of the queen doesn't really end here though. We can also dive into the two pathways that one of these royal specimens can be created, and the further evolution into even more powerful and larger forms. So in a typical xenomorph hive, the creation of a queen begins with a special egg called a royal overmorph. Unlike regular eggs that produce standard face huggers, the royal overmorph hatches a royal face hugger, which carries the genetic code to birth a future queen. And one thing I might add, queens are pure breeds while the drones and the others are hybrid breeds. Anyway, once a royal face hugger finds a suitable host, it implants an embryo that develops into a crested chest burster which has a distinctive ridge along its head, marking its future as a queen. When this chest burster emerges, it rapidly grows into a queen over the span of hours or maybe days, depending on the environment and available resources. As it matures, the queen's imposing crested head and elongated body starts to define her as the dominant force of the hive. The alternate pathway to becoming a queen begins with a humble drone, the backbone of any xenomorph hive. If a hive loses its queen or lacks one altogether, the hive may initiate a transformation in one or more drones. The drone first evolves into a royal guard, sometimes referred to as a palatine as in the case of those found in the homeworld, Xenomorph Prime. These xenomorphs become larger and more formidable, often taking on a protective role within the hive. If the conditions remain favorable and a need for a new queen arises, the royal guard can further develop into Praetorians by being fed royal jelly or something akin to that. Eventually the Praetorian can undergo one final transformation into a full queen, stepping into her role as the new leader of the hive. This transformation is physically intense, with the Praetorian shedding its protective plating and elongating into the imposing form of a mature queen, which could be quite painful for the Praetorian. So a queen will rule a hive for a pretty long period of time, as queens have lifespan that spans into the hundreds or even thousands of years. And if they have ruled a hive for long enough and extended into multiple hives, the queen may evolve into an empress. This stage marks a huge leap in size and strength, and the empress often presides over multiple hives rather than just one. She commands entire legions, maintaining control over her powerful presence and telepathic abilities. One such example of an empress might be the AVP queen seen in Antarctica. Then long-lived empresses, which are visibly aged due to millennia of existence are termed as matriarchs. They are still empresses, 
in status but are visibly different. The matriarch from the 2010 game Aliens vs Predators was far greyer in coloration than other queens, possibly due to her extreme age as she is said to be tens of thousands of years old. But even she is in the penultimate form and this one goes to the queen or the hive mother. This is a nearly mythical figure in xenomorph lore. The queen mother is believed to be the ruler of all xenomorphs across many star systems, controlling entire xenomorph hives and planets through a vast psychic network. She is colossal in size, far beyond that of a queen and the queen mother is virtually immortal. And so this in a nutshell is the creation, the biology or anatomy and the evolution of a queen xenomorph. And with that we end this video. Now if you like this one then watch this other one too and do check out our channel for other dragon, monster, xenomorph and middle earth content. We might have things you haven't seen before. Like, subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.